and laughter We want to swim in the water We want to dance There is a river flowing A river of joy and laughter We want to swim in the water We want to dance There is joy in the house of the Lord There is joy in the house of the Lord For these needs, Brother Gary Morris, Sister Skidmore, Terry Markle, Jessica Smith. Amen. How many of you know? You know. It's not I think. It's not maybe. But you know that God is a healer. You know that he hears every prayer that you pray. Amen. And so let's go to him in faith, believing for these needs. Lord, we love you today, God. Lord, we thank you, God, because you do hear every prayer, God. Your arm is not shortened that it cannot save. Your ear is not deaf that it cannot hear. But God, to you prayers come, God. Amen. And we ask you to touch Brother Morris this morning, God. Heal his body totally and completely. Lord, touch this just get more, God. Lord, and whatever is troubling her body today, God, that you would heal, Lord. God, take care of that need, Lord, in Jesus' name. 
name. God, touch Terry and Jessica this morning, God. Lord, bring an answer into that situation, God. And Lord, we always pray, God. Lord, give us an outpouring of the Holy Ghost, God. Lord, give us revival in these last days, oh God. Lord, bless your church, God. Bless your ministers, God. Bless your people, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Well, praise the Lord. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Amen. Welcome to the Pentecostal Church of Atascacita on this Sunday after Christmas. Amen. Did everybody have a good Christmas? Amen. Praise the Lord. We serve a great and a wonderful God and a wonderful Savior. Amen. There's nobody like him. At this time, we'd like to uh, receive the offering. And uh, as always, uh, you know, give the, let the, uh, the row ahead of you go and give them time to get back so we can maintain some social distance and you can bring your offering forward and, and greet each other. Turn, smile, wave, and make yourselves friendly. Amen. We're so glad you're here today if you're a visitor. Amen. If you're a home folk, welcome back. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. God, we love you today. We thank you for all the, the blessings, Lord, that you have poured out upon your people, God. Lord, the way that you've kept us, Lord, the way, God, that you have provided for us richly, Lord, God. And, Lord, we ask you, Lord, to receive this offering, God. Lord, as a, as a sacrifice of thanksgiving, Lord, and as a praise unto your holy name. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Bring your offering.
for a savior that came and gave us all for us. Um, I'll never get tired of hearing about his great love for us. He came knowing he was gonna die and that he, he had to do it to save us. And I'm so thankful for that. gave the sign bow to babe on bended knee the savior of humanity unto us a child is born he shall reign forevermore no
praise the Lord. Amen, amen. Well, if you have your Bibles, open up. Uh, you're going to want to stick your, open up to John chapter 1 and then, and then put your thumb in Galatians chapter 3. And uh, we'll be reading John 1, 1 through 14. And then we'll skip over to Galatians chapter 3 and we'll read 326 through Galatians 4 and 7. Amen. Thank God for His mercy. Amen. Thank God for that great gift. Amen. He has truly been good to us. Amen. John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. That's John the Baptist. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God." And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now Galatians three twenty six. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. Even so we... When we were children, we're in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law to redeem them that were under the law so that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Lord Jesus, we love you today, God. We thank you for your word, Lord. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our paths, God. Lord, we pray that you would speak to our hearts this morning, God. Let your word go forth and accomplish the purpose, Lord, that you have sent it to. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And you may be seated. Praise the Lord. You know, Christmas is a season that is defined by its music. I think maybe perhaps more than any other season, you know, when we think of Christmas, we, we, we or at least I do, I start associating it with the songs that we sing, the music that we play, uh, both secular music and religious music. The music of Christmas is special. Amen. Uh, this year, I bought an album of French Christmas carols, and uh, I probably drove my family a little bit crazy because I just played it over and, and over again. And of course, it was in French, not in English. But I, I really enjoyed uh, looking at the translation of some of the French lyrics um, to these familiar Christmas carols. The same tune that you would expect, uh, but similar sentiments, but slightly different words. And on that album, they had the first Noel. Amen. Uh, or as it is known in French, today, the king of heaven. And verse one simply went like this. Today, the king of heaven, in the middle of the night, wanted to be born with us 
of the Virgin Mary, to save the human race, to tear it away from sin, bring back to the Lord his lost children. Noel, Noel, Jesus is born and we sing Noel. Noel, Noel, Jesus is born and we sing Noel. The triumph, the triumphant tone of the words are moving to me. Noel, we sing Noel. Jesus is born, and therefore we sing Noel. Amen. And many of our English songs are the same way. They carry with them a note of triumph, a note of celebration, a note of joy, right? Joy to the world. The Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Hark, the herald angels sing. Amen. Songs that are about the triumph of God in the world. Amen. And this song, this verse, specifically to me, is a proclamation. It is an announcement. Noel, Noel, Jesus is born. Let us sing Noel. Amen. It's, it's the town crier in the middle of the square announcing the news to the city. Noel, Noel, Jesus is born. Let us sing Noel. Amen, as Sister Smith just sang, Noel, Noel, amen, in the town square you begin to lift up your voice to, to get the attention of everyone, the folks who maybe are still sleeping and haven't woken up yet, Noel, Noel, come and see what God has done. Amen. Singing about the good news of Jesus, amen, is such a part of the season of Christmas. We sing Noel. Amen. We sing Noel. We sing about the light triumphing over darkness. We sing about the incarnation. We sing about the redemption. Amen. Triumphant songs, celebratory songs, songs of joy, songs of hope. But folks, our song needs to go beyond December 25th. Amen. We sing Noel. Amen. We sing about the triumph of light over darkness. Think of the words of the, the familiar Christmas carols. And in thy dark street shineth the everlasting light. Amen. It's dark streets. We sing about a darkness, amen, that the light shone into. How about long lay the world in sin and error pining until he appeared and the soul felt its worth. Amen. The songs of Noel, it paints a dark picture. Amen. Isaiah 9 and 2 says this, the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Amen. It's a dark world, but light shone in the darkness. Isaiah 60, verse 1 through 2 says this, Arise and shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Amen. I, I can't think of two verses that more aptly describe that that more uh, uh, aptly describe our world. Amen. Darkness covers the earth. Gross darkness to people, but there's a light. Amen. There's a light that shone in the darkness. John one and five. In Him, that is in Jesus, was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in the darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. The darkness has not overcome it. We sing Noel, folks. The light has come. Amen. We sing Noel. Come look what God has done. In the midst of darkness, in the midst of gloom, in the midst of, of, of just all the things in the world, the true light, which, light every man, which lights every man, came into the world. Amen. He came, the light came, the light shone in the darkness, and in the darkness wasn't able to fight back. Amen. But the light was triumphant. Folks, for, for the light to shine on every man, that means that every man sat in darkness. Folks, this is what we celebrate when we celebrate Christmas. Amen. When we sing Noel, Noel, we sing Noel, Jesus is born. We're, we're singing about the fact 
amen, that there was a darkness upon the earth. There was a sin upon the earth, a covering of sin, right? Long lay the world in sin and error pining, amen. But one came, amen. One came, the true light came, hallelujah. And that is what we celebrate just because, amen, you're in darkness doesn't mean you have to stay in darkness, Amen. Noel, Noel, come and see what God has done. The light of the world given for us. Noel, amen. Thank God for the light. We sing about the incarnation, right? The second verse of Hark the Herald Angels Sing is probably one of my favorites. Christ by highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time, behold him come, offspring of a virgin's womb. Veiled in flesh the Godhead see, hail the incarnate deity. Pleased as man with men to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. Amen. Hail, amen, the incarnate deity. Veiled in flesh the Godhead see. Or maybe the more familiar words of Mary, did you know when you kissed your little baby, you've kissed the face of God. Amen. It's not just the birth of any baby. It's not just the birth of any leader or any king that we celebrate. Amen. But it is the incarnation. John 1 and 1 and verse 14. In the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld His glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth. Galatians 4 and 4. But when the fullness of time was come God sent forth His Son made of woman. Made of a woman. And made under the law. Amen. The Lord didn't just come down. On Mount Sinai, the Lord came down. Amen. If you go back to your Old Testament and you read about, uh, about the Exodus and when the children of Israel came out of Egypt and they went and they, they, they got to Mount Sinai and the, and the word of the Lord came to Moses and said, Moses, I'm going to come down and the people are going to see, but, but on the mountain I'm going to come down, but set a border around that mountain that the people don't come through and touch the mountain because whatever touches the mountain, you're going to kill. Amen. And God came down on Mount Sinai. He came down in the smoke. He came down in the fire. He came with a voice that sounded like trumpets that the people covered their ears and said, Moses, just let him talk to you because we can't bear to hear the voice. Amen. But this time, the Lord didn't just come down. Amen. In a fire and in a thunder and in a thick darkness. But he came down and became a man. Amen. Hallelujah. You have not come, amen, to that Mount Sinai which cannot be touched, but we have come to a heavenly Jerusalem. Amen. A heavenly host. Amen. Amen. You've come to what can be touched. You see, amen, Jesus humbled himself. Amen. The Lord humbled himself and was born of a woman. He wasn't an angel. Folks, this is an important doctrine. Amen. Amen. He wasn't just an angel. He wasn't a demigod, as we would see in Greek mythology. He wasn't an aberration or something other than human. But he was the Godhead veiled in flesh. Folks, this is the basis of the gospel. The Word was made flesh. Amen. This is not just something for theologians to sit back and chew on and and write papers about. No, this is the basis of our proclamation that God came down to us. When we couldn't go to him, he became flesh. He was incarnate deity. He was made of woman. He was made under the law. He was fully God, First uh, Colossians 2 and 9, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. But he was fully man. Amen. He bled. He hungered. He thirsted. He slept. He was wearied. He was moved with compassion. He lived. He died. And he rose again. 
Amen. He was fully God and he, would, and he was fully man. The spirit of the Antichrist would deny that Jesus was a man. Folks, this is, the, this is an important doctrine. We can't lose the emphasis on the incarnation that God himself was robed in flesh. You see, John 4 and 3, 1 John 4 and 3 says this, And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye heard that it should come, and even now is already in the world. Amen. He came down. Amen. He came down and robed himself in flesh. Amen. The Lord of lords, the King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty. Who is the king of glory, the psalm says? The Lord of hosts. He is. Amen. But he came down. And the one who had all power in heaven and earth. The one who could speak. Who did speak. And everything that is came to be. Amen. Universes were created by the power of his word. And he came down and took the form of a baby. And became a servant and was obedient even unto death, the death on a cross. Amen. It's the incarnation. Amen. The whole gospel is this, folks. Man was lost in sin and could not save himself from death. But Romans 8 and 3 says, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Jesus was born. Jesus died. Jesus rose. And Jesus is coming back for a people who are called by his name. Amen. This is the great mystery of Christmas. This is the great mystery of the faith. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. We sing Noel. Oh, folks, we got a message. We got a message that's better news than anybody could ever sing. Amen. We've got, a, we've got news to cry out from the mountaintops. Amen. And from the valleys. Amen. That's better than any news you could ever receive. And that is this. Jesus Christ is come. Amen. He is come. Amen. He is come. Noel, Jesus is come. Folks, the song of Noel is one of joy. It's one of hope. It's one of victory and redemption. I could go on, right? Joy, because in Isaiah 53, it says this, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Amen. If you're here and you're, and you're bowed down by grief and sorrow, let me tell you something. There was a light that came into the world. Amen. There was a baby that was born. Amen. There was a God that became flesh. Amen. And he came to bear your grief and carry your sorrows. Amen. We sing Noel. We sing a song of joy. Amen. We sing a song of hope because his life is for us the promise of everlasting life. Amen. Every funeral of a Christian you go to, you can just, you can just smile. Even, through, even though we may be sorrowful, we can smile and say, it ain't over yet, honey. Amen. Because he lives, we shall also live. Amen. Because he reigns, we're going to reign with him. Amen. His life is hope for us. Amen. It's a song of victory. Because in John 1 and 5, it said this, that the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness was not able to, excuse me, to overcome it. Amen. It's a song of adoption. Because of John 1 and 2, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. The gift that was given, amen, God robed in flesh. But will you receive it? Because if you're willing to receive him, amen, then you have the power to become the sons of God. Amen. Redemption and adoption. Galatians 4 and 5. Because God sent forth his son to redeem them that were under the law. That we might receive the adoption of sons. We could go on. We could go on. Amen. But I tell you what. The last verse of the French, the French version of O Holy Night sums it up for me. It says this. Who will tell him our gratitude? Who will tell him 
our gratitude. It is for us all that he was born, that he suffered and died. People, stand up and sing your deliverance. Noel, Noel, we sing the Redeemer. Noel, Noel, we sing the Redeemer. Amen, amen. Folks, come see what God has done. If you haven't reminded yourself lately about what he has done, come and look and tell him your gratitude. Stand up and sing about your deliverance. Sing about the things that he has done for you. Sing about the times he has healed you and that he's kept you and that he's provided for you. Amen. This is the song we sing. Lord, thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your goodness, God. Thank you for the deliverance, Lord, that you wrought for your people, God. Lord, a great deliverance, Lord, that we could not do on our own, God. But you saved us, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Do you have a song of deliverance in your soul today? Amen. But folks, the song has to go beyond, right? The holidays are ending. Soon the decorations will be boxed up. The ornaments are going to be repackaged. The wreaths which decorated the windows and doors are going to disappear. Amen. The lights are going to be taken down and everything's going to go back into the attics and the storage buildings until next November. The Christmas parties are mostly over now. The turkey is eaten. The pies and sweets consumed. The gifts given. The trash ready to be placed by the curb this week. But will you continue to sing Noel? Folks, we've got to keep singing. Now, I don't mean that you need to be singing Joy to the World in July or break out Hark the Herald Angels Sing in August. If you want to, more power to you. But people might look at you a little funny. Amen. But the message that we celebrate so visibly and so loudly during Christmas is the message that the world needs to hear from January to November as well. This is the great commission that has been given to the church. Throughout the year, folks, our lives have to begin to sing, Noel, Noel, come and see what God has done. Folks, God has totally and completely changed us. Galatians 3, 27 through 28 says this, For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ. And then in 4, 5, he, or 4, 6, he says, And because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of his Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Those of you who have received the message, you have been changed. Folks, you are all one in Christ. We are the body of Christ. He ascended back into heaven that he might fill all things. Amen. And he has become the head of all things to the church, which is his body. Folks, we we like, especially in our culture, to make everything about us. Everything's about my happiness, my fulfillment, me, 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 right? Right? And if we're not careful, we make religion about me too, right? We like to treat church like we treat, like we treat our, our cell phone provider. What service are you providing to me? Amen. But, and, and, and folks, the incarnation and Christianity is only partly about us as individuals. Certainly the message is this, that God loves us individually, Amen. The scripture clearly teaches this, that he has the hairs on your head numbered. Amen. He knows everything about you. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, he says, if I make my bed in hell, you're there. If I, if I, if I flee on the wings of the morning, you're there. Wherever I go, you're there. Where shall I go from your presence? Lord, there's not a word in my mouth, but you know it. Amen. God loves us as individuals. But let me tell you, folks, he calls us as individuals to be members of a body, to be members of his church. And that is accomplished through faith. Amen. We have to receive him in faith, which works in two ways that are highlighted here in Galatians. You know, the Galatians, they were having trouble. They had started off well. But somewhere along the way, some people had come and began troubling them about the law and about Jewish traditions. 
and, and was trying to tell the Galatians that, you know what, you need, to, you need to get back to the law of Moses because you can't really be a Christian unless you're keeping the law. And so Paul begins to remind them, amen, that it's by faith you were baptized in the name of Jesus. Amen. You received the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Ghost. He said, but did you receive the Spirit by the law or by the hearing of faith? Amen. Did you you receive the promise of the Spirit through faith? Don't let anybody tell you that the Pentecostal church teaches a works-based salvation. Amen. Baptism is not a work of righteousness. It is not a work of the law. Amen. It's not something. Amen. Baptism is the biblical response of a heart that says, I believe in that name. By faith, amen, you were baptized into Christ. Amen. John, John, what did he say? He gave as many of them as received him, gave he them power to become the sons of God who, who, who put their trust in I'm, I'm, I'm misquoting it here. But as many as received him to them, gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name amen there's only one place where you believe on his name and that's when you go down in the water calling upon the name of Jesus when you go into that tank and the preacher says upon profession of your faith and belief in the word of God I baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ amen that's where the name is married with salvation amen and as many of you as has been baptized into that name you have put on Christ amen by faith because you are sons God filled you with his Holy Ghost he filled you with the Spirit of Christ amen and whereby we cry Abba Father amen when you receive the Holy Ghost it's not something that well, they put a little oil on my head and I received the Holy Ghost. No. Folks, there's a change that happens. Amen. When the Spirit comes in, He begins to cry out, Abba, Father. And that comes out of your mouth in another tongue. Speaking in other tongues, you receive the Spirit of God by faith. Folks, if you have been baptized into Christ, then you have put on Christ. This is every bit as amazing as the Incarnation. Think about that. You have put on Christ. To put on Christ is to be made a part of Him. To be to put on Christ is meant, it means to be made like Him. In baptism, we put off the old man and we put on a new man. Colossians 3, 9 and 10. You have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. You, you put on Christ. You thought you just got wet. No. You put on Christ. Amen. I, there's nothing magical about the water. Now, there's something powerful about the name, though. Amen. But when you put your faith in Him and you go down in that water, amen. Somebody asked me one time, do y'all baptize in holy water? I said, no, last time I checked, it was from the mud district. Just regular old water. But when we put you under that water, There's a name that's called over you. And then the old man goes under. And through a work of the Holy Ghost, through a work of faith, God working in you, not you doing anything. Amen. But putting your faith in His Word, a new man comes up. A new man that is clothed with Christ. That is put on Christ. Clothed with righteousness. Amen. That's a miracle. Amen. God has received you as a, as a son and he, he sent the Holy Ghost into your heart. Folks, we give ourselves through faith to God in repentance and baptism. And he in turn gives us the sign of adoption, which is the gift of the Holy Ghost. This is union with Christ. Amen. We've got Jesus on the outside. We've got Jesus on the inside. 
Amen. We, this, is, this is something. Folks, you become one with Christ and one with each other. When you're baptized, when you receive the Holy Ghost, there is a oneness with Christ and a oneness with each other that is inexplicable. It's just as much a mystery to me as the mystery of a God who had become flesh. Amen. You become one with God. 1 Corinthians six seventeen. He that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. 1 Corinthians 10, 17. For we, being many, are one bread and one body. For we are all partakers of that one bread. Think about that next time you take communion. Think about that when you're drinking the juice and putting the, the piece of bread in your mouth. I may be taking, we, we're all taking part of the bread, but we are one bread. Amen. By His Spirit, by His death, burial, and resurrection, by our participation in His death, burial, and resurrection. Amen. There are three that bear witness. The blood, the water, and the Spirit. And these three agree in one, the scripture says. Folks, you have been made one. You're part of one body. And you're part of one spirit. Amen. What a mystery. Amen. The incarnation happens again when when you are saved. When you're baptized, when you receive the Holy Ghost, it's like Christmas all over again. Amen. God has been made flesh again in some way right therefore we ought to be Jesus everywhere to go everywhere we go we ought to be living a Christ like life we ought to be living out the incarnation in our lives our lives should be singing Noel to somebody come on if you've put on Christ then you ought to be displaying Christ if you've got the spirit of Christ in you then that's what ought to be coming out of you Amen. If we've put on with Christ, if we have received the Spirit of Christ, then our lives ought to sing a song of peace on earth. Am I walking with my feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace? Ask yourself that question. Look at the way you, 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 you live and, and, and where you go every day and think about how you interact with your neighbors and your family and, and your job and ask yourself, am I walking with my feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace the song that the angels sang was glory to glory to God in the highest and peace on earth where does that peace come from it comes from the incarnation it comes from you right if you've got this if you've put on Christ if you've got Christ in you there ought to be peace that you're bringing to the world Amen. Is my life singing a song of peace? Is my life singing a song of reconciliation? Second Corinthians, Paul said, God has given to us, us, the ministry of reconciliation. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, the scripture says. And now he's given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Amen. Is my life Folks, this is rubber meets the road Christianity right here. Right? Am I striving for peace with everyone? Am I striving for the holiness without which no one will see the the Lord? Folks, we should consistently show Christ to the world from January to December with no exceptions. To everyone we meet. I don't know about you, but I think I I think I I I fall short of short of this more than I care to admit. Amen. Am I really, truly living the life of Christ? Folks, if it was easy, we wouldn't have Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10, 24 through 25 says this, And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. How many of you have brothers and sisters? Yeah. Did your mom ever tell you, would you quit provoking your brother? Would you quit provoking your sister? Would you just leave them alone? Right? Amen. Just just leave your brother alone. Leave your sister alone. But in the Bible, it's the other way around. We're supposed to provoke one another to love. 
We're supposed to find ways to kind of poke each other and say, hey, are you loving like you ought to be loving? Are you showing the love of Christ to the, to the people that you meet on the street? We're supposed to provoke one another unto good works. Have you shown God's love to somebody? Have you done something for somebody good this week? Have you, have you done a good work? Amen. Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. I know it's cliche, but are you being Jesus to your world? Amen. Is your life singing a song of peace and goodwill toward men? Is your life singing a song of glory to God in the highest? Amen. Are your feet walking in the footsteps of Jesus? Amen. And we're called to walk with Him everywhere He went. Sometimes we walk through miracles. Sometimes we walk over the mountains. Sometimes we walk through the wilderness. And sometimes we walk through a garden of Gethsemane. Jesus said, if, if, you're, if you can't take up your cross and follow after me, if you put your hand to the plow and look back, you're not worthy of me. We've got to walk with him every step of the way. Not just part of the way, but all the way. Amen. Let your life show the love of Christ. Let your life share the peace of God. Let your life shine with the light of God everywhere you go. Everywhere you go. Amen. Because folks, what you're doing, amen, when you're at work, when you're at school, or wherever you are, you know, and, and, and you're hearing these things, and you're doing these things, and it ain't always easy, but you do it. Right? In the face of persecution, in the, in the face of someone who's Maybe they're not interested in showing peace to you, but you're showing peace to them. Amen. Your life is singing a song. Come look what God has done. Come look at the love He's shown. Come look at all the great things He's done for me. Amen. Your life is a witness. You're living the incarnation. Amen. Let's all stand. Amen. Amen. I, sister, sing that song.
for the miracle of Christmas, God, the miracle of the incarnation, Lord. God, thank you, Lord, for Calvary, for that precious blood which cleanses us, God, which redeemed us. Lord, we know, God, that we weren't redeemed, God, with corruptible things such as silver and gold, but we were redeemed with the blood of a lamb, the precious blood of a spotless lamb, Lord. And we thank you for that, God. Lord, I pray that you would go with us, Lord, as a church this week, God. Lord, help us, God, to keep your word, God. Lord, to, to walk like you walk, to talk like you talk, God. Lord, let the things that you love, God, be the things that, that we love, God. Help us, Lord, God, to be, to be Lord, uh, God, I don't know, Lord, to, to bear your image well, God, before the world, God, and to sing, Lord, a song of redemption, Lord, to the folks that are around us, Lord. We ask all this in the wonderful, most holy name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. You can be dismissed. We would like to remind everyone as you go that there is no service tonight. Amen. But we will be back here on Wednesday night. Amen. 7 o'clock prayer, 730 church. And so the Lord bless you and keep you and we'll see you Wednesday. Amen. Hi, this is Pastor Kevin Martin, and I just want to thank y'all for joining us today, tuning in and being a part of our service. We hope that it was a blessing to you and that you were uplifted and encouraged and felt the presence of the Lord. If you would like to know more about our church, please join us at www.atascacitaupc.com and you will find all of the ministries. You will find pictures where you can take a journey and see everything that's been going on at the Pentecostal Church of Atascacita. And uh, we hope that you join us again very soon. God bless you.